Welcome to this joint meeting of the Multnomah, Washington and Clackamas County Commissioners to fill the state Senate District 18 seat. Today is Monday, November the 29th, and I am the Multnomah County Chair, Deborah Kafori. The health and safety of our community and staff members are at the forefront of our minds as we continue to navigate county business in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. In accordance with the COVID declaration of emergency, today's meeting is being held virtually. To align with social distancing guidelines, some rules associated with Board of County Commissioner meetings will be temporarily altered. Please remember to mute your mic when you are not speaking. And before you present, make sure to unmute your mic and check to see that your camera is on. Before we begin today, I would like to invite all of the commissioners present to introduce themselves. And we will start with Chair Harrington and the Washington County Commissioners. Chair Harrington, please introduce yourself and then pass it to the next Washington County Commissioner. Thank you, Chair Kafori. My name is Katherine Harrington. I'm the elected chair of the five member Washington County Board of Commissioners. And I'll turn it over to Vice Chair Pam Treese. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Pam Treese. I'm Washington County Commissioner from District 2, also serving as the Vice Chair. I would like to turn it over to Commissioner Rogers if he is here. I am, Pam. Thank you. Uh, Roy Rogers, District 3 from Washington County, which is a southeastern quadrant and, and has uh, quite a bit of the Senate District in it. Chair Kafori, I believe that is everyone from the Washington County Commission in attendance thus far. Um, so I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. Uh, we will start our introductions with uh, Commissioner Stegman. Good afternoon, Lori Stegman, uh, Multnomah County Commissioner representing East County, part of Southeast Portland and all of Gresham, Fairview, Troutdale, Wood Village and the unincorporated areas. Commissioner Vega Peterson. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jessica Vega Peterson. I'm the County Commissioner for District 3, which is much of Southeast and East Portland. And Commissioner Jayapal. Good afternoon, everyone. Sushila Jayapal, Multnomah County Commissioner for District 2, which is North and Northeast Portland and parts of East Portland. Thank you. And since we have uh, no Clackamas County commissioners present, we will begin. Uh, this is the time and place designated by the Secretary of State and the Clackamas, Multnomah and Washington County boards of commissioners to fill a vacancy in state Senate District 18. The Democratic Party of Oregon forwarded three nominees for our consideration today. Akasha Lawrence Spence, Sarah Lemley and Martin Mendelson. Sarah Lemley and Martin Mendelson have decided have made the decision not to appear today and they do not wish to pursue the appointment. We still need to go through the process of filling the vacancy um, and we have one candidate today, but commissioners should feel free to consider other candidates per the direction of the Oregon Secretary of State. First, uh, we will provide an opportunity for public comment uh, that will be followed by a question and answer session with the nominee. And then we will conclude with a vote to fill the vacancy. Marina. Uh, opportunity for public comment. This is the time for the board to hear public testimony, not for board deliberation. When it is your turn to speak, I will call your name and unmute you. I will set a timer for one minute when you begin speaking and announce when your time is up by saying time, at which point, please wrap up your sentence. When you're done with your sentence, I will place you back on mute. Madam Chair, we received 11 oral submissions for public testimony, which were shared with board members and staff. Our first public testimony is from Senator Casey Jama. Um, and Casey, uh, you may begin now. Thank you and good morning, Commissioner Chair Kafori, Chair Harrington, and Chair Smith. My name is Casey Jama. I'm the Oregon State Senator representing District 24, which includes Multnomah County and Clackamas County. Areas. I'm here today to support, to satisfy support in an appointment for Akasha Lawrence Spencer in a, for her appointment to Senate District 18. I have worked with Akasha for many years. 
and I can attest to you, she is a strong leader, has a, a proven track record. One of the work that I have done with her is recently has been, she assembled a, the first work group to craft equity investment, uh, which is really helping making sure that Oregonians who are being dealt with the mass incarceration due to the war on drugs, uh, to get the support that they need in, in, the, in the community, which includes home ownership, uh, workforce development, and small business support. That kind of work really creates an opportunity for all Oregonians to try and success, to be successful. Akash, Akash's leadership has been tremendous. Akash's leadership has been a tremendous support and, and success, successfully helping us to guide the conversation that we're having. You know, we are in a very tremendous time. Her community housing also is very incredibly strong. Her, her background on architect and design can help us to guide the development policies that can help to shape what organ housing could look like for the future. Finally, we are in a tremendous time, difficult time. I worked with Akash, I know who she is, I know what she stands for. What I can tell you is that by her appointment to her Oregon Senate today, you are creating an opportunity for Oregonians to see what kind of leadership that she is and helping us to make sure that we benefit her leadership. I strongly, strongly encourage you to support her nomination and appointing her to represent the Senate District 18. Thank you so much. Thank you, Senator Drama. Thank you for coming today. Um, the next uh, presenter is Samuel. Samuel, you may begin. Hello, I met Akasha for the first time nearly a year ago during her post legislative tenure. I remember so clearly that first meeting we had on Zoom. Uh, not only did I leave that meeting feeling more inspired and hopeful for this city, but I felt like I was speaking directly to the future of Portland. That one hour meeting centered around uplifting artists involved in the creation of murals all over downtown Portland during the summer of 2020 quickly turned into daily check-ins, deliverables, agenda items, and strategies. Akasha's ability not only to direct and facilitate these spaces, but lead support and show up for conversations and, and artists is a prominent reason the preservation of art and culture in our city to craft the Portland we deserve has had a ripple effect in so many communities. She makes it all happen while bringing others along and amplifying their voices. Her presence enlightens and her abilities to relate, uplift, and speak the truth are changing the fabric of the city and surrounding areas. And I am so honored to know Kasha, and she is representative, voice, and leader for all communities here. Time's up. Perfect timing, Samuel. Thank you so much for your testimony today. Yeah, absolutely. Our next presenter is Emily. Emily, would you like to begin, please? My name is Emily Fuang Tran. I'm a senior at Tualatin High School. I am Akasha's campaign intern and I lead her youth team. From the beginning of her campaign, Akasha is focused on including young people at the decision making table. That has meant creating a youth team that works on the campaign, learns about the political process, and encourages other young people to participate too. Last July, our youth team organized an event geared towards youth and BIPOC, educating them on the importance of PCPs. Akasha thinks seven generations into the future. She knows that young people should be at the table on every issue, not just issues focused on youth, because issues like housing, health care, and tax policies will eventually affect young people too. Akasha meets people where they are. From redistricting to Domestic Violence Awareness Month, she roots her leadership in community engagement, helping people understand and act on the challenges of the present and the future. Thank you, Emily. Our next speaker is Oriana. Oriana, would you like to begin, please? Chair Kafori, Chair Harrington, and commissioners, for the record, my name is Oriana Maniera, and I'm here in my capacity as a private community member. I enthusiastically support the appointment of Akasha Lawrence Spence to the open seat in Senate District 18. I have known Akasha for almost three years. In that time, I've seen her develop a powerful as a powerful and accountable leader. 
one who keeps promises with integrity and pushes whatever body she is part of to do more for communities who have been marginalized or oppressed. I've seen Akasha triumph in multiple levels of government from a volunteer on the Portland Planning and Sustainability Commission to state representative of House District 36 to community advocate fighting for COVID recovery for black families and businesses and equity to correct the historical and present harms around cannabis. The constituents of House District 36 and Senate District 18 more broadly are fortunate to have Akasha Lawrence Spence returning to the state legislature. She is truly for the people. No one will represent them more steadfastly, more thoughtfully, or more courageously. We need more champions for climate and environmental justice in the legislature, champions who see the resilient housing and public health or climate justice issues. She will be one of the strongest voices in favor of legislation that will help to deploy emergency cooling technologies to the communities like Multnomah and Washington counties that were most devastated by the heat wave. She will be a strong supporter for Senator Dama's bill to establish renters' rights in the same vein. Uh, I urge you to support Akasha Lawrence Spence for Senate District 18. Uh, she's the best possible candidate. Thank you. Thanks for coming today. Uh, next speaker is Winta. Winta, you may begin. Yes, good afternoon, Chair and Commissioners. My name is Winta Johannes, and I live in Multnomah County. I've had the honor of getting to know Akasha both through her service in the legislature and our shared time on the board of Next Step Oregon. Um, I'm asking you today to appoint her to Senate District 18. When you appointed Akasha back in 2019, we couldn't have anticipated the challenges that would come in the following year, yet she's demonstrated time and time again that she was the right leader for the right moment. And her long list of endorsers and broad coalition of supporters reflect her success as a community builder, as an effective legislator. And as Emily spoke to, though, I'm most inspired by her commitment to supporting and cultivating the next generation of young leaders uh, and civic activists in our state. So I have no doubt that the residents of Senate District 18 will be well represented by her proven leadership. And I am really excited by the prospect of once again having a black woman in the Oregon Senate a representation that has not existed since the passing of late Senator Jackie Winters. So, uh, again, thank you for allowing us to share with you today and please send Akasha to the Senate. Thank you. Our next speaker is Afrita. You may begin. Hello, Afrita. Hello. Are you there? Oh, there you go. Yes, I'm here. I am having um, audio issues. I'm trying to work through. Is it possible I, you can come back to me? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, our next speaker is uh, Lakanya. Lakanya, would you like to begin? Yes, Lakiana Drury, uh, Chair Kafori, Chair Harrington, uh, appreciate the time and being able to speak on behalf of Akash Lawrence Spence and enthusiastically endorse um, her candidacy for Senate District 18 as someone who works in the nonprofit space, works in um, criminal justice reform. It's really important that we have leadership in there that understands the multifaceted aspects of it from behavioral health to mental health. Um, it's been mentioned numerous times too. just her engagement with the community. She's previously helped work with our youth and word is bond. And it's for all of these and so many other reasons that I uh, in support and I'm proud to stand behind her for this candidacy and urge you to vote for her uh, in your upcoming appointment. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your testimony this morning. Uh, Jeanette, uh, you're next. Would you like to begin? Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, commissioners, uh, for the opportunity to speak today. And uh, my name is Jeanette Ward Horton. I am speaking here knowing Akasha Lawrence Mintz for the last 18 months, working with her first in her role in Senate District uh, 36. She is what I wanted to share with you all is she is an incredibly effective leader that um, really renewed my sense of um, faith in, in government and in the ability for government to work for, um, for what community needs. 
We expect our legislators to listen to us. We expect our legislators to find solutions that make our community better. And it's really um, a joy and an honor to have her here in Oregon because she does both. She really listens and she really works to make community better um, in such a selfless, tiring, you know, tireless way. I'm I'm honored that she's still serving Oregonians, and I highly encourage you to um, uh, elect her today. Thank you. Thank you. Josh, you're next. You may begin. Hi, all. My name is Josh Cox. I'm here to support the appointment of Akasha Lawrence Spence to Senate District 18. I've worked closely with Akasha over the last year and a half. In addition to her aforementioned work in recognizing artists, compensating them, and preserving their art, Akasha also endeavored to create space for grieving and healing in the Black community during this hard, these hard times. Her event, A Movement for Black Art, Gathering and Diasporic Repass, ensured that there was latitude to mourn all of those lost to state-sanctioned violence while simultaneously celebrating the beauty of their lives in our community. More personally, Akasha has been an incredible mentor to me, and I'm sure many other young community members attempting to find their footing. You couldn't find a better candidate for this position. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Our next speaker is uh, Nakenge. I will um, unmute you. Please begin. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, Chair Harrington, Chair Kafori, Commissioners, I am McKenzie Herman Johnson. I joining you by phone because I had a bit of WebEx difficulty, uh, but please uh, note uh, that I'm congratulating you all today on your opportunity to choose Akasha Lawrence Spence as the next Senator to represent District 18. It's a great opportunity for you and for your constituents to be represented by someone who knows the business of stepping into a role and making it work immediately. We saw her do it when she was appointed to um, the House seat uh, following Representative Williamson's resignation, and we get to see her do it again today um, if uh, you make the right choice by appointing her to this role. I am fortunate enough to be one of the co-architects of the Oregon Cares Fund uh, for Black Relief and Resilience, along with Akasha Lawrence Spence, which means I spent day after day, week after week, month after month working with her daily um, to build a $62 million fund in support of Black Oregonians and others. Um, what that means for you and your constituents is that she fought hard to save businesses and to protect jobs. She fought hard to help families survive this pandemic before they were ever her constituents it officially. Up. It's the kind of work that she does day in and day out, and she brought communities together to do it. I'm really excited about the opportunity to have her in our state Senate once again. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we also had Andrea Valderrama signed up, but I am not seeing them on the call. Um, and that is all for our public testimony. Did you want to go back to Afrita? I'm so sorry, Afrita. Uh, of course, uh, please begin. <laughs> if you are Absolutely. able to. I am. Does everyone hear me? Okay. Yep, we can hear you. Excellent. Um, so thank you for um, coming back to me and giving me this opportunity to speak on behalf of Akasha. Um, I've had the pleasure um, to work with her a few years back and um, the long or the short of it is that I, um, I am I am one year into my home because of uh, because of how Akasha creates space and it is encouraging and supportive and community centered. Um, I um, in, in working with her through a women of color group to um, get my finances together and also um, believe or begin to believe that I can own my own home. Um, I just had the opportunity to see how she focuses on the people, um, how she uh, is creative and caring and connecting to um, to people around her, and she sees the value of everyone that she has the pleasure um, to work with. And so um, I fully support this um, choice point and choose Akasha. Thank you. Thank you. So, Marina, you said that is the end of our. Yes, that is the end of our um, public testimony. Shall I um, go to R1? Yes, please. R1, hearing on filling a vacancy in the Legislative Assembly, Oregon State Senate District 18. Thank you. I want to thank everyone who showed up to um, testify this morning. Uh, now I'm going to explain the procedures for the hearing, and then I will ask for a motion to adopt these procedures. The nominees will provide opening statements proceeding alphabetically, 
and each nominee will have two minutes for their remarks. Commissioners will then ask five questions to each nominee. Nominees will have two minutes for each response, and if needed, commissioners may ask follow-up questions. Those responses will be limited to one minute. After the board has finished with their questions, each nominee will be given two minutes to provide a closing statement. The board will then deliberate until we identify one nominee with a plurality of support. A plurality means the most, and therefore, if nobody receives the most support, we will continue to deliberate and take preliminary polls. Once we identify a nominee that will receive a plurality of support, we will move on to R2 and take a formal vote to fill the vacancy. In accordance with ORS 171.062 and based on the number of registered electors on January 1st of 2021, each Clackamas County Commissioner is allotted 0.2 votes. Each Washington County Commissioner is allotted 8.4 votes and each Multnomah County Commissioner is allotted 11.4 votes each. If for any reason a County Commissioner is unable to attend the meeting, that commissioner's vote would not be cast. And as I said earlier, no Clackamas uh, County Commissioner was able to make it today. Luckily, we have someone else with us today who will be doing um, the addition, multiplication, and division uh, needed, not me. So uh, thank you for whoever is doing that. Uh, may I have a motion to adopt these procedures? So move Ooh. approval. Harrington. Chair Harrington moves. Uh, County Commissioner Vega Peterson seconds. Uh, the board clerk will now take a roll call vote. Commissioner Myron? Aye. Commissioner Jayapal? Aye. Commissioner Vega Peterson? Aye. Commissioner Stegman? Aye. Chair Kafori? Aye. Commissioner Treese? Aye. Commissioner Rogers? Aye. And uh, Chair Harrington. Yes. The procedures are adopted. And now we will move on to opening statement. And since we are fortunate enough, I suppose to, we should say, to have one nominee this morning or this afternoon, Akasha Lawrence Spence, you are up. Thank you so much, uh, Chair Kafori, Chair Harrington, and members of the County Commission. My name is Akasha Lauren Spence, and I am the first person in my family to be born in America. My mother immigrated to the United States over 40 years ago, working tirelessly as an SEIU nurse on the front lines of our community and as a lieutenant colonel on the front lines of the battlefield. She taught me about service and showed me how to live my values. Losing her in 2017 was the most painful moment of my life. Yet because of my mother, I had the freedom to walk away from a job, start a small business, and live a values first life. I did this in spite of living with multiple sclerosis, a lifelong illness that confronts many with permanent disability and too often a lifetime of debt. I knew the resources I had so readily available to me, too many others did not. I had to change that. So last year as House Representative for District 36, when our state confronted unprecedented need, a global health crisis economic crisis, and the youth-led movement to demand racial justice, I worked in community to pass landlord and tenant protections, landmark police accountability bills, and a holistic COVID-19 response that provided direct economic support to farm workers, immigrant families, small businesses, our indigenous communities, working families, and $62 million to Black Oregonians who would otherwise be left out of the equation. As monumental as those investments were, there is still an incredible amount of work to be done. I'm running on a simple yet impactful economic justice platform because no Oregonian should be houseless or expected to negotiate between paying the rent and buying groceries, seeking medical care or going into insurmountable debt, or be unable to access capital to start a small business or own a home for no other reason than their gender or the color of their skin. I'm running because I have proven firsthand through community-centered leadership how the work we do in the legislature can repair harm, transform lives, and turn trials into triumph. My name, again, is Akasha Lauren Spence, and I'm running to represent Senate District 18 and the people of Oregon, and I'm asking for your support to do the life-saving work of writing and implementing policies that quite literally save lives. Thank you. Thank you. 
And now we will have questions from commissioners. Commissioners will ask a total of five questions. One question from each of the five county commissioners uh, representing Senate District 18. Uh, the nominee will have two minutes to respond to each question. And as a reminder, commissioners may ask a follow up question and those responses will be limited to one minute. Commissioner Myron, you have the first question. Thank you, Chair. And um, I am very pleased to be able to ask this first question today. Um, so, in the last legislative session, the Oregon legislature made some significant investments in behavioral health. These included investments in residential treatment facilities, workforce incentives, and systems innovation. Much of that investment is still at the state and has not yet been released. And uh, would like to know what you will do to advocate um, for the release of that money and to ensure that a significant portion of it comes to the tri county region where uh, so much of this work is done. Thank you so much for the question, Chair Myron. Um, it's an excellent and very timely question. I think, you know, one of the things that we recognize um, throughout the pandemic and um, going for moving forward is that the state has a lot of um, trouble moving money to uh, get it in the in the systems and in the hands of the people who need it the most. We've seen that with unemployment. We've seen it with um, the delivery of rental assistance. And we're, again, we're seeing it with the delivery of behavioral health funds to the counties and to the people who desperately rely on these services. And so I think it's, it's a larger question of how the legislature works with the um, uh, executive branch to really move our agencies forward and to get them the full time staff and to get them the um, resources they need so that we as Oregonians are not um, waiting when we have such urgent need. And so I've worked um, while, you know, the un we were having the backlog with unemployment to push that forward and to work on a, a smaller work group to push that forward and to work hand in hand with the agency to get those funds out. And I would do the same um, to ensure that our behavioral health funds go out into the community and meet the needs. And so, again, I think tackling that larger issue and, and tasking whomever becomes our next governor um, to make sure that they, they do this work, but also um, working alongside those agencies to push that money out to make sure that they go to the counties, especially Washington and Multnomah County, where we have the, lar the largest and the second largest counties in our state, um, which is critically important. I don't know if you told me time was up, Marina. Okay, that was that was so perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. Commissioner Treese. Uh, thank you, Chair Kafori. I do not have a question at this time. Uh, I appreciate you being here, Akasha. It's good to see you and thank you for your presentation. Commissioner Rogers. Yes, thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, congratulations on your impending appointment. I'm, I'm being presumptive, but uh, I'll be the first. Uh, it, my question is, is that as you probably are aware, um, in the southeast part of uh, Washington County, we've never been happy that we've been bifurcated in, in our uh, in our representation. It has nothing to do with you, but it would be with your future representation. We've always liked our community to be whole, just like every other community. Uh, what are you going to do specifically to represent an area that's uh, feeling a little disenfranchised simply because it's carved out uh, a portion of it into uh, a, a district that uh, is, is not, uh, you know, their larger community of the tight grid area. What are you going to do to do that? And what are you going to do? I, I assume you're going to be there a long time. I'm, I'm hoping and uh, uh, that uh, maybe the next time around that you can make the tight grid community whole once again. Thank you so much, Commissioner Rogers, for that question. It's it's one that I've worked um, heavily to bridge that gap. Um, so from the, I recognize that I was going to be running for this seat um, since May of this year, and I've met with Mayor Schneider. I've met with um, folks, Kenny Asher, folks who have worked on um, in uh, you know Tiger City governments um, to recognize those needs and to really um, root myself in the 
plans and the work that the community is doing now, especially the Southwest Corridor Plan, which I believe we'll be able to move forward due to um, the infrastructure bill that was passed. Um, in addition, um, I have stood alongside um, older residents at Woodbridge to ensure that they maintain senior housing, affordable senior housing. And so making sure that we are um, understand that a lot of our needs are, are the same, but um, also rooting in that community, getting to know folks and rallying alongside them to make sure that their needs are prioritized and that we are um, ensuring that housing and affordability and development in Tigard is one that is equitable and meets the needs of that region. Thumbs up from Commissioner Rogers. Next, uh, we have Chair Harrington. Thank you, Akasha. I was going to ask you a question about uh, what you would do in the upcoming session if what you're hearing from the city of Tigard is different than what you hear from the city of Portland about any particular bills. I know it's it's a tough situation to describe hypoth hypothetically, uh, but this is a question that was submitted to us by former state, uh, state representative Margaret Doherty. So I thought it would be uh, useful to ask. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for the question, Chair Harrington, um, via proxy of uh, former state representative Margaret Doherty. Um, you know, it's a great question, I think. A lot of the needs that we are confronting um, in our region are the same, right? We're all confronting extreme um, and critical needs in terms of housing, in terms of behavioral and mental health, um, in terms of economic development. And I think that that is the economic development piece is where we um, can have differences of opinion on how we need to um, support economic development in Tigard versus in the Portland half of our, our district. And, you know, part of that is is the way that legislators already manage bills that are going to be, um, you know, stretched across our state um, at, when, we, when we legislate, right? We have bills that come from particular communities, but we have to look at what's best for the needs of the whole, for the collective good. And I think that that is always, um, you know, what I root my, my leadership in and how I bring community together to reconcile those differences and to meet the needs going forward. I see Commissioner Teresa's cat would like to ask a question too, but I <clears throat> think um, your time has already come and gone. I'm sorry, Comm Commissioner, we're going to. She wanted to talk to your cat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Well, I have the next question, uh, the last question. Um, of course, we know that COVID has created an unprecedented scale of need in our community. And one of the greatest needs is the need for housing stability and rent assistance. Then this need will continue for a long time to come and currently exceeds uh, the need exceeds what we have available in funding. Will you push for a special legislative session to seek an additional 200 million dollars for rent assistance? And will you commit to making sure that that money is directed to local community action agencies um, instead of the state system? Thank you so much for that question, Chair Kafuri. Um, Absolutely. I've been on the ground talking to Oregon uh, Housing Alliance, speaking with Kat, speaking with all um, of our um, housing advocates um, statewide and within our communities to push for that special legislative session. And I believe that it will happen because, you know, we already had this large housing crisis and we have this looming, um, you know, 13,000 Oregonians who are in jeopardy of eviction right now. We can't, we know that it's it's way more difficult to rehouse folks once they've been houseless. And so it is our job to triage that need and to prevent that from happening. I will say that um, ensuring that funds go to the um, community um, assets that help to push those monies out um, is always gonna be one of the better solutions than simply getting it through to the state. So anything we can do to streamline um, the, the folks getting the money that is needed, um, I will support with, of course, detailed consideration and making sure that it is actually the best route to get the funds to Oregonians in need. Thank you. And 
Now you have time for your closing statement before we take the very suspenseful vote for the appointment. Well, I, I want to thank you all for um, being uh, partners in this work. I think the last year has um, really been incredibly difficult um, for us all in this community um, to ensure that folks are housed and fed and um, get the public health and the medical assistance that they need to survive and to keep themselves above water. And I have proven that I can do that work, um, that even in a short amount of time, that you can really create transformational pol policy and re reinvigorate um, the hope and the change that is needed to move our communities forward. Um, I truly believe that it is our job to push our, push our state forward with equity, to make sure that those who have been most marginalized are at the front of the line are, and are prioritized, that we fix our Medicare, right? We have that opportunity coming this February to ensure that you know, seniors as well at, um, have access to um, vision and dental and all of the things that are missing from our healthcare system. And so there's so much that still needs to be done. And unfortunately, Commissioner Rogers, to answer what you said, this will not be a long tenure in the in the Senate because of redistricting. Um, whomever um, serves these communities next will have to will be sitting senators now, right? And so this is an opportunity to do some really great work for this community as it exists, for this Senate district as it exists right now. And I'm more than up for that challenge and I am grateful for your continued partnership in doing that work. Thank you. And now we have uh, time for each commissioner to make a uh, closing statement, and then we will take a roll call vote. We're going to start with Commissioner Jayapal. Thank you, Chair, um, and thank you, Akasha, for stepping up once again. I am just delighted to have this opportunity to appoint you for a second time. Um, as others have said, you know, you came into office at perhaps the most difficult time one could imagine for certainly for the country, the, 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 the state, and you proved that even with a limited duration engagement, which, which is what your last one was as well, that you could really, not to use a cliche, but it's true, hit the ground running and get incredibly important work done. And, I th you know, I think we all know the things that you worked on, folks have talked about them. I'm so struck today, again, by the authentic engagement in community with community, the rootedness in community. I was, all of the testimony has been wonderful, but I really was particularly struck by Emily's testimony in particular um, and her statement that you think seven generations ahead. That is an incredibly important skill um, and perspective that you bring and not just a perspective that you bring, but one that you've shown that you can actualize. So I, I am delighted. Thank you for stepping in once again. Um, I'll end the suspense. My vote will be yes. Thank you. Commissioner Rogers. Get off a of mute there. Thank you, Deborah. Um, yeah, congratulations for running. I, I particularly liked your comments regarding small business. Uh, we have a lot of it here in Washington County, and I appreciate you uh, you recognizing that. Uh, I didn't realize that the redistricting would take you out. I, so hello and goodbye. Uh, short uh, farewell, I guess, but. Uh, I, uh, I'll be impressed to work with you and impressed uh, with uh, your uh, your ability to, to uh, see a whole lot of different uh, issues that come to you from different counties and different needs. And, and I particularly, as one just one Washington County Commissioner, I really appreciate you saying that Washington County is the number one county. That was remarkable, and I, I just uh, thank you for saying that. Teasing. You made his day. All right. How about Commissioner Myron? Thank you. Um, so, Akasha, I recall meeting you when you first came to my office and you were introducing yourself because you were uh, reaching around, out around the first appointment to House District uh, 36 as an interim candidate. And 
uh, it was pretty much at that meeting that I realized what a what a special person you are. Um, what what a shining star um, who is so thoughtful and uh, so dedicated to representing people who had never been represented before. And um, you demonstrated that perfectly uh, with the people I still remember the people that you brought to that. Um, that hearing the appointment hearing and. You know, it is, it is so important to bring voices into the process and that's what you do. And I love so many of what um, people who spoke during public testimony uh, made such great comments. I love um, how Winter described you with, you know, you being the right candidate at the right moment. Um, you were then, and I think you are now. And uh, Lakiana's description of you as such a systems thinker, you put lots of things together and you know, whether it be around behavioral health, um, economic justice, uh, art, and raising that up in our community, it is all so important. And then, uh, as Commissioner Jaipal did allude to, I also loved Emily's comment about thinking seven generations ahead, because that is something else that you do. And you have so many qualities that, that our state needs during these really challenging times. And you have a knack for stepping in and getting things done. So, um, you know, I, if I was not voting today, I would have been here uh, with a public comment myself uh, supporting you. But as it is, I will be voting and, um, and I cannot wait to vote yes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Stegman. Thank you, Chair. Akasha, it's so wonderful to see you once again. Thank you for stepping up to fill this important gap. Uh, I supported you uh, in the last appointment as a representative, and I continue to support you. I know that your lived experience, as well as your small business background, will really serve our community. And so I am very proud to continue to support you and wish you. All the best. Commissioner Treese. Thank you, Chair Kafori. Um, Akasha, uh, my best wishes to you for a very successful session. And um, I second what everybody else has said. And I want you to know that I'm certain your mother is very proud of you today. Commissioner Vega Peterson. Thank you, Chair. Um, this feels a little bit like deja vu all over again um, with being back here to appoint you to serve um, in the legislature in, in an interim way. Um, you know, people have referred to this as kind of a caretaker, but you've never um, treated this role, this opportunity as a caretaker. You have stepped in and stepped up when um, situations have needed it and it needed it so much. Um, in the last couple years and the work that you've done on housing, the work that you did on racial justice, the work that you did um, in the limited time that you were in the legislature has just been incredible. Um, you've been a, like a role model and um, really a champion for so many people. And I know that you will bring exactly that to your role in the Senate. And, you know, and, and not for nothing, like the fact that um, there are no black women serving in the Senate and only two black women serving in the legislature is a, a big deal. It makes a thing, it makes a difference in the legislature um, as conversations are happening and who's being considered. And, um, you know, it's not just about representation. Representation matters, but it matters more about the work that you do when you're there. And we already know that you do the work that's needed and step up um, and lead. Um, in a way that that our state in, needs and so many people in this state need right now. So I am so um, excited and happy to be able to support you in this um, effort that you're doing today and we'll be voting yes. And Marina, were we able to connect with Commissioner Fai? Yes, I'm going to unmute uh, Commissioner Fai now. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Fai, you're unmuted and can begin speaking. Hi, everyone. Can you guys? Can you all hear me? Yep, we sure can. Sorry about my um, 
technical difficulties. Um, if it's not downloading Zoom, it's another thing called WebEx now. So I've had a hard time, um, but I'm happy to be here. And um, Akasha, congratulations ahead of time. I agree with Commissioner Rogers, <laughs> um, but I'm just happy to be part of this process and happy to participate this appointment. Um, I think um, you're a proven leader, Akasha. So I have no doubt you'll work hard, um, even harder than when you were state representative appointed. So I'm looking forward to your um, the work that you're going to do and the results that you're going to deliver for our constituents and look forward to partnering with you as a county commissioner in Washington County. Thank you, Commissioner Fai. And sorry you had uh, technical difficulties, but we're glad that you were able to voice your support here at the end. Uh, Chair Harrington. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Lawrence Spence. I really appreciate your pursuing this unique uh, appointment, uh, given that it is for such a short time. But we have seen through your actions in your prior interim uh, appointment, but also through the community comments today, that you put community first. What more could we ask of our uh, servants in these legislative bodies? Thank you so much. I appreciate all of the integrity, hard work, and thoughtfulness that you put forward, and I'm honored to have uh, the opportunity to appoint you to this position today. And I uh, will go last but not least to say thank you again for putting yourself um, forward for this um, immense responsibility. And yes, you will have you will have twice as many constituents as you had in the house so you will be working harder but we know that you will um as commissioner Jayapal said hit the ground running you're a proven asset to our community and we are just very very grateful that you are putting yourself um forward again so that we can all send you off to salem to do great things for us uh and with that we don't need to do the preliminary poll so we're going to go straight to uh, a vote and I'm just going to call your name and you're going to say who you cast your vote for and then we will um, move on to the next person. So we will start with Commissioner Jayapal. I am very pleased to cast my vote for Akasha Lawrence Spence. Commissioner Rogers. Yeah, this is going to be a surprise. Kasha, of course. Yes. <laughs> We need some ominous music playing, or no, we need some celebratory music playing since we know what the outcome is going to be. <laughs> all dance afterwards. Commissioner Myron. I cast my vote for uh, Akasha Lauren Spence. Commissioner Stegman. I cast my vote for Akasha Lauren Spence. Commissioner Treese. I am honored to cast my vote for Akasha Lauren Spence. Thank you. Commissioner Vega Peterson. I cast my vote for Akasha Lawrence Spence. Commissioner Fai. Surprise, I too <laughs> vote for <laughs> Akasha Lawrence Spence. <laughs> Chair Harrington. With gratitude, I support Akasha Lawrence Spence. And me, I to cast my vote for Akasha Lawrence Spence. All right, now we move on to R2. I hope I'm doing this correctly. Um, probably not, but that's okay. Um, R2, go ahead, please read R2 for us. R2, resolution filling a vacancy in the Legislative Assembly, Oregon State Senate District 18. So moved. Seconds. Commissioner Stegman moves. Commissioner Jayapal seconds. Approval of R2. 
May I have a motion to appoint Akasha Lawrence Spence to fill the vacancy in the Legislative Assembly, Oregon State Senate, District 18. So moved. Second. Commissioner, or sorry, Chair Harrington moves. Commissioner Stegman seconds. The appointment of Akasha Lawrence Spence to the Oregon State Senate, District 18. The board clerk will now take a roll call vote. Commissioner Fai? Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Jayapal? Aye. Commissioner Myron? Aye. Commissioner Rogers? Aye. Commissioner Stegman? Aye. Commissioner Treese? Aye. Commissioner Vega Peterson? Aye. Commissioner uh, Wiley? Not here. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Chair Harrington? Yes. Chair Kafori. Aye. The motion carries and the resolutions adopted. Congratulations, Akasha Lawrence, State Senator Lawrence Spence. Um, you also have the, uh, at least as far as my memory goes back, which is, a, is pretty far. Um, I don't know that it's ever been unanimous straight out of the get go. So congratulations. You have that distinction as well. And now, um, you are invited to make some remarks if you would like to as the newly appointed state senator for District 18. Thank you so much, uh, commissioners. Um, I'll make it brief. Thank you. Um, and I look forward to working with all of my constituents, continuing this work um, and getting things done for us. Um, this is, again, I always say that we're not doctors, but some of us are. <laughs> um, but this is truly life saving work and I take it incredibly seriously. And so I'm just honored to be able to have this appointment and I will go forward and continue to do this hard work. We know you will. We're very excited. All very, very excited. So I'll give a round of applause. And despite the uh, lack of sus you know, sus suspense for this, we on uh, this is we're all so excited for you. We know you're going to do a great job. We look forward to working with you and now you can go celebrate. That concludes our meeting today and there be no further business. We're adjourned. Thank you. Take care everyone. <laughs>